Hello, my name is Gwen Chinosi Bagley, and I have the honor of serving as the Youth Development Officer with the YMCA of Greater Seattle. And I want to thank you for giving of your time today to join us as we take a deeper dive into the work around ensuring all in our communities have access to food. So today's format is going to include a few opening remarks, uh, followed by Dallas Wood, who will be sharing more about the Y programs and our hunger response work. Following Dallas, Nicole Lau will be facilitating a discussion with several uh, distinguished panelists who are deeply immersed in this work. And there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions as well as make comments. And I invite you to use the chat box um, at any point in this webinar. In spite of the ongoing efforts around addressing food scarcity, children, families, and seniors are still struggling um, often when it and often it's the food programs like the WISE that are their main source of meals. While data is difficult to come by, research does tell us an estimated of one out of four children across the country face hunger, and in Washington, one out of seven children are unsure of where their next meal will come from. Many of the safety net programs that were provided during the pandemic are starting to sunset and programs reverting back to pre-COVID requirements. And families who were struggling before COVID and before the pandemic are worried about the loss of services as they slowly dwindle. The WISE commitment, along with our many partners, is to stand in the gap for children, families, and seniors and seek ways to fulfill a basic need of food security. No one should have to worry about where their next meal should come from. I wanted to take a moment to share with you some examples of our hunger response work. Um, the Y understands that every community is different. And so we do take the time to work in collaboration with community and organizations to understand the needs and how best to provide support. And some of those examples include um, offering community dinner programs that are open and free to all, as well as um, delivery right to the doors of our families of youth and seniors where meals are delivered. One of the programs I want to highlight is um, with you is our university-wise Magnuson Food Pantry. Their community needed meals and a way to gain meaningful access to healthy food options. And through partnerships with churches, the University Food Bank, and many others, we were, we were able to provide community meals free to anyone who came to provide, um, came to us on Sundays and Wednesdays where the food pantry was available. And these programs have provided the community with resources that they needed. And over the course of a year, we were delivering over 110,000 pounds of food. And I think one recipient really captured what this uh, program meant to them. Said the pantry has been a wonderful offering, helping with our limited food budget. Having a family member in treatment for cancer means that we spend a lot of time going and coming from appointments. And having a pantry of food at home means we also have the means that we spend less time at the grocery store, helps us with our finances, and it's so important for those who are at risk of COVID-19. We're so grateful for the pantry. Now it's my pleasure to turn this over to Dallas Wood, who's going to share more about the programs and others um, about the impact that has been made. And Dallas is a member of the Y team and who has a deep commitment to serve community and ensure that all have what they need, not only to survive, but to thrive. Take it away, Dallas. Ah, thank you so much, Gwen. Uh, really appreciate the warm welcome. Um, yeah, as Gwen said, my name is Dallas Wood. Um, I'm a director uh, with the YMCA of Greater Seattle's Hunger Response Team. Um, I'm really excited today to tell you a little bit more about the WISE uh, fight against hunger now um, and how we keep moving forward with it as we progress, you know, continue to progress through this, um, you know, the impacts of COVID-19 and, and, uh, and the pandemic. Um, as you know, COVID-19 really threw us all for a curveball last March, caused many new challenges for everyone, um, and uh, including uh, causing a lot more uh, food support needs across the nation. Helping fight hunger has always been a priority for the YMCA. And in the past 17 months, since the start of pan the pandemic, we have been able to more than triple the amount of meals we served in 2019. Um, as you see on, on the screen here, we have served over 655,000 meals across King County 
um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what what each of those meals looks like and um, how they how they're delivered and who they go to in a little bit. But uh, this is a sustained increase of more than 50 percent than what we've done in the past. And the Y State's committed to continuing um, to help support you know families in King County going forward. Um, and on the next slide here, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about food and security and what that looks like. Uh, so the definition of food insecurity is when someone has limited or uncertain access to food. So this could be someone who has enough money to go buy groceries at the beginning of the month. They may be able to feed themselves and continue, but as the month goes on and those groceries start dwindling and the food starts running out, they don't have enough money to go purchase more and they're at a place where they, where they don't know where their next meal may come from. Um, as Gwen mentioned before, in King County, one of seven kids experienced this food insecurity. Uh, you know, it's quite scary for, for a child, you know, someone who doesn't, doesn't have a job, doesn't know where to go for a, their next meal. Um, often these kids rely on free and reduced breakfast and lunch as their food for the day, but they don't know what to do when that's not an option. So when it's the weekend, when it's summer, when there's a pandemic and they're no longer at school, where do they go? Um, so this is really where the Y tries to come in, and this is where we try to put one of the spots we try to put our our foot in and help support. So help to help support uh, food insecurity for youth. Uh, the Y works with both YMCA and other agencies before and after school childcare sites uh, to provide meals and snacks to youth, uh, ensuring they have they have that extra meal after school ensuring they get some food in their bellies before they go to school and have to sit and learn all day. Um, and then to support youth on weekends, uh, the Y works with local school districts and partner agencies like communities in schools rent in Tequila, uh, where we weekly pack um, and deliver uh, non-perishable meals, snacks, and fresh fruits and vegetables to youth. Um, during the summertime, when schools are closed, the Y partners with libraries, parks, and many other community organizations uh, to offer locations for youth to come receive meals. Uh, and also to support our, our youngest youth, the Y ensures all youth at our early learning centers receive breakfast, lunch, and snacks throughout the day. Uh, these are just some of the ways that we serve over 2,000 meals daily across King County. Um, but we also know children are, children are not the only ones that need food. Uh, when children are living with food insecurity, we know this often means their families are as well. Uh, they're often making sure that the food goes to the kids first, leaving them without meals. Um, so the why the why also looks at how do we support our families and how do we um, help serve everyone throughout King County. Um, so some of the other ways that we uh, serve Th those 2,000 meals I mentioned daily. Uh, we have three weekly community meals throughout the community uh, throughout King County where everyone is welcome. Uh, you know, everyone needs food. Everyone can well is welcome to come get a warm meal uh, each week. Um, we also offer fresh and frozen meals that we deliver directly to uh, people's doors. Um, we have a weekly food pantry that Gwen mentioned uh, before where people can come in close to their home and pick out exactly what food they would like, um, as well as we uh, provide food boxes um, and produce boxes directly to people's doors as well. Uh, the Y cannot do this work alone. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the partners that we do this work with. Uh, the Y is lucky to have so many wonderful partners. It's I don't know, 30 plus partners we have, and I'm probably underballing there, uh, but they all reach, they all work with us to help support a community and fight, fight hunger. Uh, during this COVID-19, COVID during the pandemic, we have really strengthened many partners, uh, but also have the great opportunity to reach many new partners and many, many partners that we maybe wouldn't have reached out to before or wouldn't have reached out to us, um, but now are, are locked in with us to help move forward and help us continue to fight, um, you know, the hunger insecurities that have came from COVID-19. Um, 
United Way of King County is a partner um, that you're going to hear about more soon here, uh, but they've really been a long term partner uh, with us and um, since COVID have really locked on even more uh, to help us really develop um, and deliver our, pro our programs. Um, school districts work with us to help provide, help us provide food to our childcare sites, as well as help us distribute food in other ways to youth. Um, Fair Start is one is a company that also helps uh, provide and deliver food for us uh, to youth, helps us reach way more uh, locations and youth. Um, many affordable housing communities such as King County Housing and Imagine Housing have opened up their properties and helped us reach out to their uh, their members to reach even more people to get more food to more people in more people's hands. Um, and then as well as many other volunteers and organizations that come from all throughout King County to help, whether it's help cook a meal, pack a bag, deliver a meal, spread our word. Um, like I said, countless number of partners that that help us make this work and the why is so lucky. Uh, to continue to do this. Uh, on the next slide, we're going to take a little bit of uh, a look of where we're serving uh, food. Um, so as I mentioned before, throughout King County, throughout COVID, uh, the need has continued to increase. Um, and actually, since this slide's been created, we're now at over 70 different meal sites throughout King County. Um, as you can see, we serve all, all parts. Uh, so there's we kind of have it broken down. There's the North and East King County sites. Um, these are the locations where our our community meals I mentioned fall in. Um, so pre-COVID, we used to offer a meal um, where where people could come inside and sit down with friends, sit down with strangers and become friends and en all enjoy a warm meal together. Um, obviously, when COVID happened, we had to change things up, um, but our, our partners and our volunteers all, all stayed strong and they wanted to continue to ensure we're serving meals. Um, so although we could not have people gathering together and have that same community feel, we built community in another way um, through parking lots. We, we passed out meals, hand, like we handed meals to people. Um, we still got to see those smiles through the masks as we handed someone the meal. They still knew where their where meal was coming from each week. Um, and they still got to try new different meals and, you know, you know, maybe it was only for a minute, but everyone got to see a smiling face at them, got got a wave, got a hello. Um, you know, early on the pandemic when you, we didn't see anyone that that went a long way to to building community and continuing the community that these programs have built uh, throughout the years. Um, in the central and west Seattle areas, um, we were lucky enough to work with farm to table and local farmers providing us fresh produce um, that we could deliver directly to families when when people uh, couldn't go out as often there was there's less produce out there and people couldn't go to the grocery store as often to get fresh produce and um, you know this is for everyone is so needed um, you only can live on canned goods and extra stuff so long so having this fresh produce that you can cook with and use it your own way uh, really went a long way, way to helping serve our community um, and then in South King County um, we had uh, even more opportunity to, to get more produce out there. We had uh, hundreds of produce boxes um, weighing anywhere from 17 to 33 pounds a week where we we delivered them to uh, seven different locations each Friday. Um, like I said, over 100 different boxes. These boxes included onions, potatoes, carrots, bell peppers. Um, and then our next wave came and we got combo boxes that also included uh, cheese and cottage cheese and eggs and milk and chicken and other meats. Um, so really uh, giving families the opportunity to still cook for themselves as well too. So um, providing meals that they can eat on the ready, but also giving them the opportunity where they can still cook and meet their own family needs, um, their own dietary needs as well. So um, really just lots of lots of opportunity to continue to get more food in people's hands. Um, on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, impact um, of COVID. Um, so like I said, many times I keep repeating, I apologize, but COVID-19 increased the need um, 
And as we move forward through this, the need is still there. The need will continue to be there for a very long time. Um, I think as many of you guys know, managing a budget for a family, is, it's, it's hard enough on its own. You throw in a pandemic, you throw in all the different obstacles that these created, uh, reduction in resources, um, harder way, harder to get to grocery stores, uh, increase in prices, um, and families are just been juggling a ton just to keep floating, just to keep up with what is available to them. Um, us in, in the food world have a hard time keeping up with what resources are still available, what resources are popping up, what resources have faded away. For so, so for people, especially people who are new to having to access these systems, uh, it, it's a daunting task to, to keep up and to, to have access to these programs. Um, and so it's the wise goal to come and support families to offer to off, not only offer these programs to families, but to make them easily accessible um, for all. Uh, and then next slide here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, kind of the height of the pandemic and where we started and where we are now. Um, so I mentioned when when COVID first got going, uh, the Y really recognized the need right away. And we jumped on, we started serving over 15,000 meals a week. Um, we did this by pivoting our programs to door to door and to go services uh, so we can continue to reach more people and reach people safely. So um, it was just a strong way where we can we can get food to people where they didn't have to go out of their comfort level um, and we can get reach more people that maybe wouldn't have heard of us, but it's coming to their door or coming to their community. Uh, we were more easily accessible for them. Um, we utilized our mini buses that often take kids around uh, King County on field trips uh, throughout summer camp. And with that being unavailable, we took these mini buses. Uh, we got a wonderful partnership, a partnership with Microsoft, um, had a bunch of meals that they used to use for people that came into Microsoft. Um, they didn't need those anymore, so they worked with us. And we delivered uh, those meals to 11 different sites two times a week, um, once again, reaching more communities, getting more meals directly to in people's hands. Um, another way we pivoted was uh, our Camp Coleman, uh, unfortunately was closed to kids um, last summer, um, but we still had the kitchen and we still had a staff. Um, so we used uh, those staff, that kitchen at Camp Coleman to, uh, to create and deliver meals to five different sites. So they delivered all the way from Camp Pullman every day, created the food and drove all the way to Seattle and Shoreline just to ensure extra hands got some food. Um, so the Y really looking to utilize any partner we have, um, as well as any resources we have to just continue to move forward. Um, and we also created new new partnerships. Um, as I mentioned before, partnerships with companies that we would never have had before, uh, like Ethan Stoll Restaurants. Um, they, pre they presented themselves to us. They, they wanted to continue to get food in people's hands. They wanted to help. Um, they needed the wise help to get that food actually out to people. Um, so we were able to deliver restaurant quality meals each day uh, using our, uh, our refrigerated van, getting them out to six different senior net sites uh, daily throughout all of last summer. Uh, uh, and so I have mentioned many of these numbers up here before, um, but like I said, we have over 70 sites and over, yeah, it says 27, but I would, I'd count many more partners that have helped us throughout this time of serving these 655,000 meals since, co um, since COVID started. Um, but I think my question when I hear that as number is like, so so what what are those meals? What does that look like? Um, and so I know I mentioned many, many ways before, but some of the types of food we've served, um, I mentioned we, we serve meals door to door. So we serve fresh meals so people can eat that day. Um, but we only can get out to so many places at a time. So, so we would also serve frozen meals. We'd serve family style meals or individual meals that are frozen where families can, can stick them in their, their freezer and then choose when they, when they need them, when they want to eat those meals. Cause maybe they have food today, 
but maybe they won't have food tomorrow. Um, so they can easily throw it in the oven, throw it in the microwave and, and have an additional meal um, or have an easy meal for a kid to make um, when maybe the, the parents are very busy and can't actually cook a meal. Um, we also have a food pantry. Um, so like I mentioned before, not everyone maybe wants the meal that we, we can get to them in their hands, but they can come out and they can pick their own um, there are meats, their own grains, their own dairy, their own vegetables, um, and even some snacks for kids that were very popular. They get to pick, kind of pick their own food that they want. Um, and then um, another partnership I love to highlight is uh, Mojitos, is a restaurant in Seattle. Um, once again, another opportunities to serve uh, restaurant quality food to families. Um, started off was supposed to be a one-time um, connection. One of our board members reached out to a, a local restaurant. He wanted to help the community. We're gonna serve, um, you know, one time 200 seniors. The impact was so large that 17 months later, we're, we're still serving weekly 120 seniors at six different, throughout six different senior sites in uh, the North Seattle shoreline area um, meals. So, you know, this one partner we thought was a one-time thing uh, has really connected and uh, shown the why that we have so many more partnerships out there and so many more ways we can we get meals out there to families and still provide, you know, food people people want to eat, people want to have. Um, and so on the next slide, I'm, I'm going to talk to you guys about going forward, what what we're excited about, what, what we can do to go forward. Um, and so the why the why is really excited to to expand um, and continue to offer new programs, especially as um, our programs change and we have different waivers in pl place and stuff coming. So we have to adapt. We have to keep moving with COVID just like everyone else does. Um, so without with this, we we do need we, we do need funding. We do need to continue to we want to keep our numbers up. Um, so we we definitely need funding, and we also. Uh, need new creative opportunities. So one of our um, new opportunities is mobile meals. Um, so we're looking at how we um, navigate our government programs and how we can get meals and um, youth enrichment activities out to more youth. Um, so utilizing our refrigerated van and going to, to communities that maybe don't have childcare at them already um, and bring them weekly food, bring them weekly activities. Um, continuing partnership with United Way. Um, we we have done this work with a large number of AmeriCorps members and VISTAs that have allowed us to build our capacity and allowed us to serve thousands and thousands more people than the Y could do on their own. Um, so continuing to use these AmeriCorps and continuing to partner with United Way to help spread our capacity out. Um, and also with that, uh, we need more capacity building, more community resource mapping. Um, so really looking at um, where the community still, where are those pockets? Where are there still needs out there? Um, identifying needs and identifying places with limited resources um, and then working to create new programs, uh, working to um, find, find the right way to actually meet each individual's community need because one program that may work for one part of the county will not work for the other. So just being adaptable, um, having partners and resources out there that can identify and work to move forward. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, community partners is huge. Um, so we, we will continue to look for more partners and more ways where we can uh, partner with people to either get meals to provide or help help them move forward with providing meals on their own. Um, huge goal of ours is to work with all our local community partners ensure all youth have access uh, to meals. Uh, sounds like a lofty goal, but uh, we have so many great community partners and we're, gonna, we're going to move forward. We're gonna get, make sure every kid has meals because just it's so, so necessary. Um, and then continue to connect resources. So uh, the Y is trying to act as a hub where we can help um, connect different partners um, so our partners are not just our partners. We want them all to partner together. We want all resources to get out there. So any way we can continue um, to spread more meals to the community, um, the Y is looking forward to that. Um, and I have the, the joy to pass you on to 
um, Nicole and our lovely, wonderful panel that has uh, been so instrumental in getting all this work done. So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Dallas. I appreciate all the work that you've done <laughs> and never saying no to any idea as long as it supports community. I could not have done this work without you and all of our partners. And I am so excited to um, have some of our partners and some of our staff share with you today. Um, we were having some technical difficulties and so one of our presenters won't be able to join us today, Jackie Connell, but I'll give you a little information about Jackie, let you hear a little bit about her story later on today as well. Um, but first, I want to introduce you to one of our amazing staff members on the hunger response team, Trinity Torres. She's a program supervisor for our hunger initiatives team. Um, Trinity, I'd like to just hear a little bit from you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us what does it mean for you to do this work? Thank you, Nicole. Um, I am so honored to be here today. Uh, the question is honestly very large and I will try my best to answer it succinctly. Um, again, my name is Trinity Torres. I'm a supervisor for the Hunger Program. Um, I manage a roughly, uh, you know, 16 to 20 of those South uh, meal sites in King County. Um, I was born and raised here in South Seattle Skyway. Whoop, whoop. And so the meaning that I find in this work is actually largely on giving back. Um, as I am a South Seattle native, uh, being able to work in um, my community and the communities you know that I grew up in um, is very large and important to me. Um, one short answer to your question is, the meaning I find is is feeding kids no matter what. Um, that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the large underneath the water would definitely be highlighting the no matter what part. Um, I have to recognize where I came from and that a lot of the meaning I find is rooted in my personal experience. Um, as a kid growing up in this, you know, greater Seattle area, uh, my family relied largely on uh, nutritional supports, um, food banks and other food services to get by. Uh, the food insecurity was tangible. Um, so it doesn't take a lot of empathy from my side to understand when we say that you know, pre-pandemic, um, the food insecurity is felt. Um, it continues to plague the, our communities that, you know, we want to be pouring into. Uh, and so the value I see every day in, you know, going out to sites and, and talking to the our participants in our, um, in our different programs, uh, I hear it. And it's really awesome to then also like have the path of my career like lining up with that. Um, so also, uh, you know, the pandemic created and, and heightened multiple barriers for the communities we're working with. Um, and so like seeing that overwhelming need grow uh, pushes me to work harder in providing those access, uh, you know, more access to food programs and help dismantling those barriers. Um, I'd love to share like a little side story um just to like give you an example of 
the types of meaning um, that I see and that I've, I've been feeling in the past year that I've been in this position. Um, and it was very small uh, and it definitely highlights a part of my heart that wants to stay present with the people we work with. And it was, it was just a, a normal afternoon. I get a call from one of our uh, community partners. Um, she is a leasing office staff for one of the, the properties that we have youth programming um, happening at. And she is a bit on edge and she lets me know that she just got done with a conversation with one of her uh, residents who doesn't know where to get the, her food for the coming week. Um, and she, this, the staff person, though, you know, um, knowing that I work with the free youth meals that at, at, at her property, um, was like, I didn't know who else to call. Do you have any type of resource? And in that moment, I, I have never felt more like a superhero um, because I was able to call my staff and say, hey, I know our service time for our youth meals are over. Do we have any leftovers per chance? Um, let's see if we can serve this resident who really had nowhere else to turn to. Um, and then, you know, in the following weeks, uh, we were able to do those produce boxes and we were able to sign this resident up for those. So then every week she had a reliable food source um, and we were able to then build that relationship further. Um, and honestly, that moment that instance would have never happened if we weren't, you know, present with our community and being there um, and allowing ourselves to have the passion we hold lead us to having an impact. Thank you again for such an amazing question. Thank you so much, Trinity. I, yeah, I mean, I'm, if you all are like me, you're tearing up a little bit. That's something that we experienced frequently throughout the pandemic and it hasn't gone away. It has lessened, but it hasn't gone away. So I appreciate you, Trinity, sharing your story and sharing that time that you spent to serve your community and the time that you take every day to work with the community and support them in ways that are meaningful to them and build those relationships because I completely agree that that is 100% uh, what we need to do and um, what we'll continue to do. So thank you so much for sharing that story and your passion and your impact with us. I'd like to also pull in Sarah and have Sarah Sealmeyer from United Way of King County, the food security program manager there who has been alongside us for years and years in this work, has supported us through many, many different ways that we've delivered youth programs and now moved into family meals. Um, huge supporter. So excited to have you here today with us, Sarah, and share with us a little bit about yourself and um, what a partnership with the Y means to United Way. Thanks, Nicole, and I'm thrilled to be here with you all this morning. It's This is fun to talk about. Um, gosh, Trinity, what you were just sharing resonated with me so much. Um, I, uh, I also grew up in a family that accessed a lot of these food resources. Um, I'm not from Seattle, but very much saw how important they are, and it's it's such a joy now to work with United Way and in partnership with the YMCA to expand this work because it is just so urgent in our community. Um, 
As Nicole said, I'm the food security program manager at United Way, and so oversee our child nutrition work as well as other emergency food supports. Um, and at United Way, we're really focused on connecting families to basic needs. So our vision is really to ensure that people have homes, students graduate, and that families are financially stable, and we're committed to ending childhood hunger in our community. We are so lucky and grateful to have a really long-standing and robust partnership with the YMCA um, as we do this work. Um, you know, I think that what is really magical about partnering with the YMCA is that it, it really is an organization bringing their absolute best to a really challenging and pervasive community problem. Um, you know, the YMCA has deep, deep expertise about anti-hunger work. They have, um, you know, deep community connections, a knowledge of youth programming, a focus on racial equity, all of these magical things that pull together and create this organization that can get work done in the community, which is the important piece in all of this, is being able to partner with folks who can actually get the work done and can address problems really quickly. Um, you know, in March of 2020, the YMCA was one of the first organizations that we called at United Way when schools first shut down. Um, and we strategized together around, you know, what does the hunger response look like for children in our community? Where do we go from here with schools shut down, with this pandemic raging, a lot of uncertainty? And the YMCA was one of the first organizations really to be on the ground and responding to the pandemic. And so I think for United Way, partnering with the YMCA has been so impactful and powerful because they're that organization where we dream big together. We look at the need and we think about how we can address it really quickly. How do we move forward? Um, you know, I'm really proud of some of the innovative partnerships that we've been able to scale with the YMCA over the last year, some of which you heard from Dallas about. But I really think that um, partnering with the YMCA for us just means that our work is able to go so much further and faster because um, you all bring so much expertise and knowledge to the table. Thank you so much, Sarah. And we just cannot thank United Way enough for everything that you all have done. Uh, we continue to just be amazed and so grateful for all the support that you all have given us over the years um, and have been such a great thought partner. Like you said, we've really um, done so many things together and so it's been great to go on this journey with you and um, see how we can work alongside our communities and uh, pull as many people together to really do this work as <laughs> together uh, in King County. So thank you so much for that. Um, so. I said a little bit earlier that we are experiencing some technical difficulties. Jackie Connell was one of our community volunteers that we were uh, going to have you all hear from today. Unfortunately, she is not able to join us, but I do just want to share a little bit about Jackie and her work. Um, we have done a program at our Coal Creek YMCA that serves the Renton and Tequila communities, and they provide um, a backpack of meals that serves kiddos over the weekend to get through that weekend time. And so we've been really excited to partner with communities and schools, Renton and Tequila, to be able to provide that service. And so Jackie has been one of the volunteers that from the get-go has um, said that, you know, raised her hand and said, yes, I will volunteer, I will provide the meals. So she delivers meals to families, she helps us pack sometimes and provides really whatever resource we need. She's been a great partner in the work and we could not uh, do that program without her. It's just another one of the ways in which we really can't do this alone. It takes a big team of folks. And so Jackie is part of that team and we would love to have you hear from her today, um, but we're, we were really excited to um, share her story and have you all hear a little bit about our volunteers there. And so if you ever do want to volunteer, I'll give you some ways um, upcoming that you can do that as well. But uh, we have some questions from the audience, which I am excited to be able to hear what folks want to ask us and give you all some answers. Um, it looks like we have a, a question from the audience that says, when you look at other partners in this work, what are some unique things that you're seeing about the why and how we're delivering that support? 
So Sarah, if you maybe wanted to take that one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think one of the things that I really value about our partnership with the YMCA is that it's so collaborative. Um, so rewinding back to March of 2020, schools close. Um, and I remember having so many conversations with Nicole about what is the best way that we can really address hunger in our communities as families are homebound, kids are staying at home. And this idea started to come together to do home delivery of meals for kids at affordable housing communities. So Seattle Housing Authority, King County Housing Authority, these communities with hundreds of kids who really relied on school meals and that access had been cut off. Um, and what I so much have appreciated about this partnership is that it really grew together with everyone bringing their best ideas to the table. And when we weren't sure about something, we would pull another partner in to advise on this work. Fair Start has also been a close partner in really scaling this program. Um, I think that's really rare to find in a partnership where you know, we sat on calls at 5 p.m. every evening for a week just trying to figure out, like, how do we cobble together this program? How do we make it work? And then to see everyone at the YMCA be so eager to learn and grow through this process, the earliest hunger response during the pandemic was a little bit messy because it was happening during this moment of crisis in our community. And to see how community feedback has been incorporated into that work, how we've learned and grown and the YMCA has shaped and shifted programs to better meet community need has just been um, incredible to watch. And I think that level of collaboration and a willingness to grow and learn and take on new challenges is such a rare, cool gift to find in a partner. Thank you so much, Sarah. It has been Definitely a pleasure. And I would say the why has been that way, but so has so many other King County partners. And so we have been so grateful and thankful to have the kind of community that has really come together to, um, yeah, just work together to make an impact on our communities and ensure that everyone has access to food. Thank you so much. Um, our next question um, is, how does the Y and its partners ensure food and meals are culturally relevant for those in need? And then it says, an example, not just bread for families whose diets center on rice. That's a great question. Dallas, would you be able to take that one for us? Uh, yeah, that is a, a great question and um, something that we, we work really hard at um, is definitely a big challenge when you know when you're talking about all the different communities and um, you know different um, people out there in King County and um, trying to identify um, who who is our clientele and reaching out to them. So um, I say we do our best to come up with different uh, ways to reach out to um, our community members and people we are serving. Um, we try our best to use different languages, different uh, modes of communication, whether it's written or text or calling or emailing. Um, so we do our best to try and reach out there. And obviously we can't we can't reach everyone. You can't um, make everything possible, but we really do reach out there and we, we really work with our partners. So uh, we work with Fair Start and many of our other meal providers and other um, organizations that help provide food to us. Um, and we have open conversations about how how do we change up menus? How do we meet the needs of the community? Um, how do we make sure we get at our pantries? How do we get different foods that um, are actually, you know, people want and actually want to take and aren't going to bring home and leave on their shelves or they're not going to take and throw away? So um, it's definitely this juggling balance of all the time trying to uh, change and adapt to the different communities. Um, but yeah, I'd say the biggest thing, we just, we always try to listen. We always try and put out the requests there. And then we always uh, try and then bring those conversations back with all our partners um, and, and do the best we can. Thanks so much, Dallas. Um, just to give some examples of ways that we have done that, it, you know, one example was Trinity and her team at a couple of our locations were talking to a lot of the residents and they were giving us feedback that they wanted halal meats. And so that was something that we worked with Fair Start um, to source and get some meals that had halal meats within, you know, within the main component. So that way those families could 
have access to food and um, food that they wanted and needed. Um, and so that was that was one piece of it. We've also um, had some taste tests with the kiddos. They've definitely given us quite a bit of feedback. And, and so that's what we use. You know, we talk to our, the kiddos that we serve, the seniors that we serve, um, whomever is getting the meals, we talk to them, we ask them for that feedback. Oftentimes, you know, when we're building those relationships like Trinity talked about, that just comes naturally for them to share some of that feedback. And like Dow said, we do the very best we can for a wide range of audiences, but Fair Start's been a great partner and um, us working with local farmers has been a great way for us to incorporate some different things. Which brings me to our next question, um, which is a, a gr another great one. So someone has stated that they have mobility issues and no transportation. Do you have any programs that do home delivery or often transportation assistance? Um, Sarah, I think this one would be a great one for you to share a little bit about some of the programs that United Way is offering right now. Absolutely. Um, one resource that is available is home delivery of groceries via a partnership between United Way, um, DoorDash, and local food banks. I think folks from the YMCA team are going to put a link to that program in the chat box, but um, community members can sign up to receive a weekly delivery of groceries to their home from their local neighborhood food bank or other food provider um, through a no contact delivery that's great for folks who are homebound, have mobility issues, or face other barriers to accessing their local food bank. Fantastic. And anytime um, you can reach out to United Way or the Y, we're happy to make those connections to whatever programs or resources we know are available. And we will reach out to others to try and get some additional resources pulled together. We've done it oftentimes, so please uh, reach out to anybody um, at the Wire United Way and we'll make those connections to ensure that you all get access to food in whatever way is meaningful for you. Um, another question that we have here, um, I'm loving all these questions. So another one can go to anybody, any one of the presenters is, um, what an incredible menu of programs. Thank you so much. Uh, when you look at other organizations fighting hunger, what sets the Y apart? What are the Y's strengths within a network of others providing food? Great question. Would anyone like to answer that on our panel? I can. Uh, yeah, another great question. These are these are all wonderful. Uh, I'm going to answer the question in a, in a roundabout way a little bit. I think the the biggest strength of the why is is, is knowing our strengths and knowing what we're not strong at. Um, and like we've mentioned so many times, reaching out to our partners, um, working and trying to create all these partnerships and uh, create other uh, partnership with people that have other strengths. Um, groups such as uh, Fair Start that can create food and help deliver to so many more communities. We the why. We don't have the the manpower or the kitchens or the supplies to, to create food and deliver it in the way they do. Um, reaching out to other communities like United Way that has the knowledge and the resources to reach out to more communities and help identify um, more gaps in coverage. Um, I, I can go on and on and list. I, I wish I could uh, list all the uh, partners we have, but just really uh, knowing knowing what we can do and utilizing the other resources out there in the community um, and continuing to build more partnerships so we can continue to expand. Great. Trinity or Sarah, either of you have anything to add to that? OK, <laughs> that's a great question. Thank you um, to whoever asked that. OK, so we have some other questions as well. So what kind of outreach has happened to homeless communities in Seattle? Many of these communities are still struggling to access programs due to distance, age requirements, et cetera. Uh, yes, this is definitely something on our radar and something that we are working um, to also identify different strategies. Dallas, you wanna share a little bit about what we've done at the university program? Um. And I can I can share a little bit too, uh, just to get us kicked off. So at our university YMCA, because it is in a uh, location where there are a lot of folks who are 
um, just in transition. And so we've worked with the food bank, the U district food bank to provide meals at the Magnuson location. And then we've also offered those community meals and that community meal on Sundays was um, brought forth from the community and our executive director there, Josh, seeing a need um, and seeing that there were folks that needed to have additional supports in that particular community. And so that's something that we'd like to replicate in other locations and see how we can help support. And then there, we also have our social impact center who's doing a lot of work as well with uh, multiple programs and they provide um, connections to us for meal supports and access to other resources for mental health or um, health care and things like that. And so those are some of the ways uh, that we've been working towards that, but we'd love to hear any additional suggestions if you all have any um, to help us continue to strategize and meet that need. So we have a few more minutes, so I will try and take maybe one more question for us. Um, and this one is the next question I see on here is, are there any changes coming up to legislation or policy that can help or hurt the wise ability to support closing the hunger gap in King County? This is a great question. Um, does anybody on our panel would like to share a little bit about the legislation that's coming out? And I'm happy to share some thoughts too. I'd be happy to kick it off, but then I'll hand it back over to you, Nicole, because I know you and I could talk about this all day because it's pretty exciting. Um, I will just share at a high level that there were a lot of flexibilities issued by the USDA and our federal government at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic that made it easier for families to access the food resources they need. This is everything from programs that make the summer meals program more flexible so that it's a lower barrier program for families to access to increasing the amount of dollars that families who receive SNAP or food stamps benefits get each month. Um, all of those resources have been incredibly powerful. Those flexibilities have mattered a lot. And so um, there are some important opportunities to continue to advocate for those flexibilities moving forward um, because we know that hunger isn't going to end as the pandemic ends and that the needs in our community continue. Um, Nicole, do you wanna talk chat about the Summer Meals Act and, and that piece of legislation? Yeah, I'd love to. And I will um, share it a little bit in um, towards the end of our webinar. I just wanted to do a quick recap for us as well. Um, so I'm going to share some exciting ways that you all can help us with the Summer Meals Act and share a little bit about our thoughts on the Summer Meals Act, which we are to reiterate um, what Sarah said we're super excited about. Um, so there are, you know, a lot of information that you heard from us today. You know, Gwen shared about the work that we've done. Dallas has shared about the work that we've done and Trinity and Sarah provided their perspectives and impact on the work that we've done with our community. And so it's the why in our whole uh, list of community partners that we've done this work together. Um, to bring it together and leave you as we end our wonderful time with you today is just to really make sure that we see the goal, which is to serve those that are in need, to ensure that we can continue to do this and fill that gap for our communities. And whatever that may look like in the future, we're working together to ensure that we bring our programs directly to our communities and directly with them. And so if you have suggestions, if you have different ways that we can strategize and help fill this gap, we are working very hard to create programming that meets the community's needs, but we'd also love to hear from you because we can't do this alone. So some ways that you can help us in this work as we move forward together is you can donate your money if you're able to, which will provide with us some additional sustainable ways that we can continue to offer these programs and offer that um, different menu of program options that really help us to ensure that each community is gaining access to food in meaningful ways for them. You can also volunteer your time, which is extremely valuable to us to be able to serve meals to our community members, help us pack those meals, 
for families and ensure that we're able to continue at the level that we need to to support our communities. You can also advocate. So Sarah was talking about um, the ways that you can advocate and the Summer Meals Act is a big one for us that's coming up. We are really hoping that this one will pass because this will really allow not only the Y, but other youth development providers, other cities and local governments, school districts, all of us to come together and have a more streamlined system so that way we can ensure that youth and families gain access to meals in an easier fashion. There are lots of paperwork and lots of regulations with these programs and so this will really help us do that. It'll also help us expand who's eligible to be able to offer these programs, which that expansion allows for a more sustainable funding stream and allows us to continue these programs in the long term. So those are just a few ways that you all can help us continue this work and sustain and support our communities. And I'd love to share with you that we have some upcoming events that you can also attend and hear a little bit more about what the Y is doing. So our next virtual summer impact series event will be on Tuesday, August 20th. We'd love to see you on that one. And then we have our AK Guy Award virtual event as well on September 29th uh, from 6 to 7.30. So we'd love to have you all join us and hear who received the AK Guy Award for this year and see what a great job um, they have done in supporting community, removing barriers and creating opportunities. On behalf of the YMCA of Greater Seattle, I thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed your time with us and please use your voice and help us advocate for our programs and help us strategize for how we support communities moving forward.